For this one, I picked a very simple strategy using trend detection with the exponential moving average and the Bollinger Band edges to generate entry signals. As you can see, we managed to squeeze around 61% in profit in our backtesting approach. Just by identifying the most profitable combination of parameters using the optimized function of the backtesting package. In this video, we're going to talk about strategy optimization. I'll walk you through a Python code that will optimize the parameters of our strategy, increase our returns, providing us theoretically with the best set of parameters. Before we continue, I would like to thank you for the ideas that you are sharing in the comments section. In fact, all of the videos are generated starting from your comments and those small discussions that we are having together. So we're going to code this strategy and backtest it on historical data. I'm using five minutes time frame for this test, so we are looking for a fast-paced trading style. If it's your first time on this channel, you can download the Python code from the link in the description below. So you can use the Jupyter Notebook file for your experiments and try different sets of parameters and see how it influences our results. So back to our strategy, we will use the exponential moving average to detect the trend. If subsequent candles are detected completely below the moving average curve, then we have a downtrend. And in the opposite direction, if the candles are above the curve, then we have an uptrend. In a downtrend, we only consider short positions. In an uptrend, we only consider long positions. The number of consecutive candles to test for the trend detection is left as a tunable variable as any other parameter of the strategy. So you can modify it for improved results. Then for the entry signal, we will use the Bollinger Band upper and lower edges. So in a downtrend, if a candle closes above the upper Bollinger edge, this will be our sell or short entry point. Because in a downtrend, we consider that the price will always converge back to the center of the Bollinger's in the negative direction. And this is an example here. We have a detected downtrend and the following candle closed above the upper Bollinger band. So it's a good short position entry. In the second phase of this uh, chart, we have an uptrend and a candle closing below the lower Bollinger band. So it's a good long entry. Once we have our entry signals, we open the position and the stop loss is defined as the product of a coefficient parameter with the ATR, the average true range. And the take profit is set as the take profit stop loss ratio times the stop loss distance or whatever we used for the stop loss. So these are the two coefficients that we will be optimizing later on. The stop loss coefficient and the take profit stop loss ratio. We don't know what are the optimal values for these parameters. So this is why we will run our optimization algorithm to detect the best possible combination. And this is the strategy we will be coding, backtesting and optimizing in Python. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. You can download it and use it for your experiments. I'm also sharing the CSV file with you, the data file. I'm using the EuroUS dollars uh, data, five minutes time frame between 2019 and 2022. So I'm doing some cleaning here. And then I'm computing the exponential moving average of length 30, the RSI in case it's needed length 10, Bollinger Bands length 15, and standard deviation of 1.5. And then the ATR length 7. So I think also you can modify these parameters later on in this lab, in this uh, Jupyter file. So there's a lot you can do with this file to experiment on different parameters. We're computing everything, adding everything in the data frame as new data columns. So everything is ready for our testing. Then I'm defining this function called EMA signal. This is basically the function that's going to test if we have consecutive candles above or below the uh, moving average curve. So we can decide if it's an uptrend or a downtrend. In the case of an uptrend, we return two. In the case of a downtrend, the function returns one. In any other case, it will return zero. But in the case we have some divergent or weird situation where we have both trends at the same time, then we're returning three, which basically shouldn't be happening at all, which means there's an error in the data or something fishy is happening. Just keep it there for the testing. Okay, so this is our function, then we can use it. I'm selecting 10,000, the most recent 10,000 candles. So this is roughly like six weeks, five to six weeks, I think of uh, time, trading time. So it's a month and a half of data simply because it's a lot of data on the five minutes time frame. So I don't want to apply these functions on 225,000 rows. It's meaningless at this point and it takes too much time. So I'm just selecting the most recent 10,000 
handles and we're going to apply our optimization on the most recent data for now. Then we have a new function called total signal. It takes the data frame that we need to consider. So the data, it takes the current candle and then the number of back candles. And the reason it takes the current candles index is that we need to apply this live later on for each candle. So whenever we have a candle, we pass its index right here and it's going to test if we have an uptrend, downtrend, and then if we have a Bollinger Bands crossing in the upper or lower direction to generate a signal, basically an entry position signal. This is why we have the data and then the current candles index. But then we also have this back candles parameter here that is used also uh, when we are calling the EMA function, so the EMA signal the exponential moving average signal is the trend signal basically here. So this is the number of candles or consecutive candles you want to consider to test if they are above or below the moving average curve to decide whether we have an uptrend or a downtrend. So you might want to say, for example, I need six consecutive candles to be below the curve before I consider and confirm that I have a downtrend. Or sometimes you want to consider 15 candles instead of just six. So depending on how selective you want to be or your system should be. Now, considering all of our conditions here, we're going to generate this total signal. We have a long signal, we return two, function returns two. We have a short signal, the function returns one. In any other case, whenever we don't have any valid signal, we return zero. And we're going to generate these signals and put them in a new column in the data frame as well to get them ready for the testing. So it takes a bit of time, this step, so it took me like uh, around a minute. And whenever you're running on a larger data frame, it takes more time, obviously. So then I'm testing uh, to see if we have any signals. So I'm just printing the rows of the data frame wherever we have a total signal that's different than zero. And this is a sample of what we are getting. So we can verify this visually. So in this case, for example, I'm plotting these just to visualize where are these candles, where are these signals, and I verify that my code is working properly. So I didn't mess up any code lines in the previous functions. Then we can define this signal function that's just going to return the uh, column df.totalsignal. And we're going to use this function later on in the backtesting class. From backtesting, I'm importing strategy and backtest classes that we're going to use to create our new class. So I'm defining this class, the constructor. In this function, I'm just initializing the process and then I'm defining a new um, variable called self.signal1. So it's an instance variable, which is equal to i signal. So i is, in, is a function that's inherited from the backtesting package, and we're going to call it, and we're going to feed it the name of the function, which is called signal here, remember this function, that will return the signal value. So this is basically a copy and paste, something you can just copy and paste from one strategy to another. You don't have to worry about it. Just define a signal function that would return your signal column and implement this part in your constructor and it should work. So the most important part in this class are these variables right here. Notice that I'm defining these variables and these are the variables that the optimization function is going to loop over to change these values. So I'm defining the stop loss coefficient which I'm initializing to 1.2 for now but it's going to change later on. And then the take profit stop loss ratio, which is equal to two. I also changed the um, size of the lot, but we're not going to optimize this one. I just put it here for now. So here, whenever I'm defining the uh, stop loss related to the ATR, so this is the stop loss distance, I'm using self dot stop loss coefficient is equal to the ATR, the last value for the last row and so on. And then the take profit stop loss ratio as well. It's equal to the self dot take profit stop loss ratio. So it's equal to the instance, the equivalent instance variable uh, of this variable right here. If you don't understand object oriented programming in Python, maybe a recap, uh, read some on. I have a course on Udemy also explaining these stuff. So if you might be interested in this, but anyway, the information is available also freely on YouTube or on any other platforms online. So now if we have an open trade or any open trades, we can exit these either by hitting the stop loss or the take profits, but also we can exit these whenever the RSI values uh, reach some extreme thresholds. So this is the part that's coded here. It's part of our trade management system. And then if we have a signal that is equal to two and we don't have any open trades because we're allowing one trade at a time on the market, 
I'm defining the stop loss and take profit values and then we're passing a long position using the buy function right here. Then same thing if we have a signal equal to one and we don't have any opened positions on the market we're passing a short position right here using the stop loss and take profit values. We're defining the backtest first of all so we're passing our parameters, the strategy, the data frame we need to use, uh, the starting cash, the margin which is the uh, leverage and for now we're not using commissions to be able to compare these with other strategies that we have coded before but you can add the commissions later on. Usually you can add one per 1000 which is fairly realistic as commissions. Then we can use the optimize function so from the backtesting package and I'm passing the stop loss coefficient list of parameters I would like to test. I'm using a for loop here, a comprehension loop, the values of one up to two going into floating steps so from one to two, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and so on and there's one way of doing it actually there might be other ways you might replace this by the numpy range function for example it also works well I just used it this way and the take profit stop loss ratio same thing it's going to be between one and two with a step of 0.1 so it's going to take the values one then 1.1, 1 1.2 and so on until two. Condition is to maximize the return percentage result. This is what we want to maximize. The maximum tries 300 because this is a grid search type so it's going to check all the combinations of these two parameters together. You might end up with more than 10,000 tries. You want to limit the number of tries to whatever slice of conditions or slice of values you have here. You can use this parameter here. I think with 300 we're covering basically all of the uh, all of the values that we have defined in these two lists Then the random state is equal to zero and I would like to return a heat map for these parameters to be able to plot these visually okay now we can run this cell and we're going to watch the um, optimization process so it takes a bit of time because it's trying all the combination of parameters as you can see but we can wait a few seconds and now we have our results so the maximum result is 61% uh, in returns as you can see here and we can access the parameters of this strategy so we can access which is the best combination for the stop loss coefficient and the take profit stop loss ratio so we can print this this is a series and we just have to for example print that right here we're going to put underscore strategy so that's the key and it's going to provide us with the best couple of parameters so stop loss coefficient is 1.2 and take profit stop loss ratio is equal to 2 so we got those 61% returns for these two uh, parameters here then we can plot the equity curve and we can see here over this month we had a very um, slow improvement in the first couple or three weeks but then for two other weeks actually we had a good improvement in the results we have a an uptrend in the equity and this is how you can assess the the strategy also visually you can plot the equity and see how it's behaving if you have those spikes and drawdowns it means it's very risky but anyway this one is working well now we can plot the heat map with the parameters and this is something very important for the verifications what we are seeing is the stop loss coefficient values that we have tried right here on the left on the x-axis we have the take profit stop loss ratio the values that we can see are the percentage in returns so what we're looking for are those uh, high zones of returns. We're not looking for isolated values. For example, we have 60% right here. This is obtained for a take profit stop loss ratio of 1.6 and a stop loss coefficient of 1.7. And I wouldn't consider this case, for example. I wouldn't say this is a good result because as soon as you move out of this zone, so imagine instead of 1.6, take profit stop loss ratio, you take 1.7. And you drop immediately to 33% and this is very bad so moving from 60 here to 49% that's okay 53 is okay and even in this direction if you move from 60 to 1.8 in stop loss coefficient it's 27% so not a very stable result what I mean by this is that the market conditions are going to be changing they are very dynamic so if you're fitting for the best results and you're picking up this combination of parameters any change in the market conditions is going to cause you a dramatic drop in your returns and this is not what we are looking for however if you look at the results in this zone right here if you change one parameter you still fall within 10 percent of difference and even better if you would take this one so what we're looking for is not only the highest return but also 
the zone, the safest zone. So if things change a bit around the current parameters, will I still be able to um, have good profits or good returns? This is what we're looking for. So don't look for one combination, the best value. Look for the best value that's surrounded by acceptable values as well, because when the market is changing, you still want to be in that zone. And that's all I had to show you for this one. I hope you guys liked it. If so, please leave a comment. I'm really curious about your ideas again. This is one of the examples where uh, the video is generated from the comments section. So thank you so much for your contribution. And until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.